on today's Apple Daily. A big list of stuff that's coming out from the EEC. John Prosser drops the dates for the Apple Silicon event and I gave answers from a lot of you. I'm David for Living on iPad and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you. If you want the latest Apple news, leaks and rumours every weekday at 12 UTC, like the video, subscribe and join the notification squad like the guy at the end of this one did and you'll get a shout out. A list of new Apple devices from the ECC. So the ECC, just in case you're not aware, is an encryption database in the European area where a lot of devices have to be registered uh, in order to be allowed to be sold. It's very much like the FCC stuff that happens in America, it's just that this is like a publicly accessible database, which means we get a little bit more of a heads up, whereas the iPad Air and uh, iPhones have just arrived with the FCC, they've just arrived after the events. Uh, these arrive te uh, quite often before the events actually happen, which is quite fun for us. In the theme of trying to find out as much information as we can uh, to spoil events, the list of devices in these applications, there's two separate applications, one for portable computers, one for desktop computers, and here's the list of what we got. In fact, I won't read out all the numbers, but I'll tell you what the ones that we could identify were, and then we will look at the gaps as well. So it starts off with 13-inch MacBook Air, so that's the old one that they were producing up until 2017. Uh, the 2020 MacBook Air, the 2018 MacBook Pro 13-inch, the 15-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pros, the 13-inch MacBook Pro with Touch Bar, the, th uh, the MacBook Air 2020 with scissor keyboard, and 13-inch MacBook Pro. So that's what comes in. So basically it tells you all of the different kind of manufacturing SKUs, but it doesn't tell you individual processors, it doesn't tell you individual storage sizes or anything like that. It's the device setup. Because it mentions running Mac OS 11, I think it's basically any devices that are supported by it. Because then when we come on to the list of desktops, uh, you've got a 21 inch iMac, Mac Pro trash can style, the 2013, iMac Pro, Mac Pro, Mac Mini, 27 inch iMac, 21 and a half inch iMac, rack mountable Mac Pro, and this is the fun one, Mac Mini Developer Transition Kit, Apple Silicon. Now, I wouldn't have thought that they would have to put in something that they don't sell, because although the developers have to pay $500 for it, it's a loan device, it's, a, it's not a retail device. That suggests to me that that might be the first clue that we've got about devices that are actually going to be coming into retail. Mac Mini Developer Transition Kit. And obviously that hasn't appeared, I don't think, either in these databases prior to uh, being launched to developers. There are then three other desktop devices that are listed. So there's the A2348, the A2438, and the A2439. Now those two at the end being quite similar numbers, I would assume that that is going to be the two different sizes of iMac because A2115 and A2116 are the two current sized iMacs. So those two are likely to be those two. A2348 might well be a Mac Pro. Could well be, unless there's going to be a new form factor for the desktop that we're not aware of at this point. Uh, then going back to the portables list, so we've got the, 20, uh, the A2147 is a gap, the A2158 is a gap, the A2182, and then you've actually got two again that are are separated by one digit, the 2337 and the 2338. So that could be two sizes of a MacBook Pro. And then we've got a MacBook, a MacBook Air potentially, and another device. And that's where it gets quite interesting. So we don't know what those devices are going to be yet. There are five gaps in that registry for new portable devices, and there are three gaps in the registry that we can't identify for new desktop devices. So there could be quite a lot coming at the end of this year, or it could be stuff that's in development and they're, they're registering it early, but we might have a lot more to look at at the Apple Silicon event than we expected. John Prosser drops the Apple Silicon event dates. So in a tweet that came out about four hours ago at the time of filming this, which was it will probably be about eight hours before this video comes out, John Prosser was on Twitter and he has uh, mentioned the dates the 10th of November which is the one that we thought but that's going to be for the announcement of the event with the event coming on November the 17th that is his prediction he's also saying that the AirPod studio are not probably coming until March next year he's even given a date for that event um, but that's so far out it's very much subject to change but Apple Silicon event November 17th that's the dates coming from John Prosser, and he has not got dates wrong yet. The only thing that he's had in the past where he's messed up on a date at all was when he thought that the iPad and Apple Watch event was coming 
a week before it did, but that was actually the event invites going out. So because he's, he's specified the 10th for the event invites going out this time, I think we can be fairly confident in November the 17th. That is going in my diary. And then we're going on to eye cave answers. We're going to do these quite quickly this time because we've got one, two, three, four to answer. So we're going to get straight into it. First one from Ilya Kuryakin with all of these, I always apologise for the way I pronounce everyone's names because I'm sure I'm getting them wrong. Ilya Kuryakin asks, when will we be able to order the 2020 iPad Air? Now that one seems like it's a nice easy one. October the 23rd, there's been multiple leaks, I think from Walmart and Best Buy in the US, that that is the date that they will be on sale, which makes a lot of sense because that's also when the first iPhones will be landing. So it's in line with the A14 launch essentially being on that date. I am... 90% going to be getting one on the day, hopefully. The Val Nerd asks, can you use something like the SE2020 and use MagSafe? Now, we don't actually know, but uh, from all the evidence that we've been having a little look into yesterday, it will charge it, it will not stick to it. So you are going to be able to use it as an all-chi charger, we think. As soon as they come out and they're available to buy, I will pick one up. Uh, because I definitely want one for my new iPhone anyway. And I've got an iPhone 8 here. We will give it a try. I've got an iPhone 10, uh, 10s here. I will give it a try. But it looks like, yes, it will charge it, but you'll have to balance it on it in the same way that you do with any other charging mat. Um, so I don't think it would be a good choice because you can get much cheaper Qi chargers. But yes, it could work. Now, the next step to that is, could somebody make a charging case which has the magnet ring in it to attach it to the back of these older iPhones with just the Qi chargers in there that aren't technically MagSafe compatible. I think that is probably going to be possible, but it will only charge at 7.5 watts and not at 15 watts. So whether it's worthwhile for the stickiness, I don't know, but we will see. Nishikant Malik asks, when will the MacBook Pro be released? Any sensitive date and price? MacBook Pro, we have had rumours, this was kind of way back in August time, uh, for the 13-inch at least, that the 13-inch would be starting at uh, $1,100, um, $1099, which is, I think, $200 under the current starting price for the MacBook Pros. So it looks like that is likely to be the starting price. Now, given the uh, registrations that have gone into the EEC directory this week, it could be this year. It might not be. That is yet to be seen. Uh, whether we will see that coming out anytime soon. But one thing that I did think is potentially, with the number of notebooks that we've got in there, it might not be purely form factors, but maybe we're going to get cellular in a notebook for the first time. That might well be something that Apple adds straight away, because all of the cellular stuff is kind of already dead easy to do, because they've done it in the past. But this time they wouldn't have to be changing too much of the chips. All the architecture is already in place to make that work. And Lucky Lalama, who joined our notification squad recently, asks, similar question, is the iPad Pro getting an update before the year's end, or is that something that's planned for after the Apple Silicon MacBooks release? We don't know, but uh, John Prosser has mentioned that he thinks there will be a refresh before the end of this year, so I think we may well see it at the Ap Apple Silicon event, because they'll already be talking about the improvements they've made to the processors, the A14X, for example, will probably make an appearance there because it's all the same architecture. It all makes sense to do together. Uh, it looks like they will go to an A14X chip. It looks like they will also add 5G and that will probably be as much as changes with it, which is absolutely fine because it's an iPad. It's not something that needs to have huge amounts of difference uh, year on year. It just means that whoever's now going to be buying an iPad Pro will get the latest version. Just like up until now, whoever bought an iPad Pro got the fastest one they made with the best equipment. As soon as this one comes out, that's all that happens. Like, it doesn't make the old ones any worse. People that are complaining that, oh, they refreshed it too fast. No. Look at Dell. Look at everyone else. They update their computers every couple of weeks when it, a new Wi-Fi card comes out or a new graphics chip and they've got 400,000 different SKUs. Like, we can't complain that Apple is updating stuff more often. We need to just be like, I will get the best one that I can get now, and then when I need another one, I will get the best one then. And that's all that we do. And anyone that's complaining that the iPhone 12 isn't a big enough improvement over the iPhone 11, if you've got an iPhone 11, you probably don't need an iPhone 12. The The point is that people that are coming like myself from an iPhone 10s or from an iPhone 10 or from an iPhone 8 get the latest stuff that's available when it becomes available. 
Notification Squad. Uh, if you want to join the Notification Squad, all you need to do, subscribe, ring the bell, and let me know in the comments that you have done that. And you can get a shout out at the end of the next video, just like Mark A, who did that on this video. I must say as well, I really appreciate the fact that our comments don't get argumentative, they don't get trolly. I think we've probably had two negative comments since, like, maybe since the first handful of videos that I did that were terrible when the lighting didn't work and the the camera broke so I got basically no audio um, and I got some negative comments about that but it was purely saying sort out your sound sort out your lighting that kind of thing um, and since we've changed what we do with the audio in the background as well with the sound with the uh, with the music tracks everyone's been very positive and I thank you so much for that because I know YouTube can be very toxic and uh, I'm just really appreciative that the community that we've kind of built here uh, is a growing fast. <sighs> Help me get to a thousand. Um, Social Blade, by the way, thinks we will get to a thousand on November the 4th, I think. So can we get there a little bit quicker? That'd be cool. Help me by sharing this video. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for being a part of a positive community on YouTube. Everyone seems to be friendly in the comments. There's very little arguments. It's a discussion thing. Nobody knows what's happening with these things. It's all speculative and it's just exciting. And we're a group of people that all love Apple stuff and that's why we're here. So thank you. I will see you on the next video.